As someone who is around these machines and, and knows what they're capable of, I don't really want to build a bunch of cars with this. I want to do something crazy with it. There's the opportunity for this machine to give me superpowers. Now all of a sudden, I can lift 300 kilograms. I can move at, at super speed and reliably and repeatedly over and over again. So this is the robot I've been working with for the past 10 weeks, and it's a machine that can move up to seven meters per second. It can hold 300 kilograms, over 600 pounds. With these industrial robots, what's fantastic about them is that they can move very quickly, but they can't see. So what we did is we set up an array of 10 sensors around the robot that can see in three dimensions in that space. And what we're trying to show here is that we can actually, with, with really simple tweaks to this existing technology, we can make it responsive to people and make it easy to use by people. So just through your natural gesture, the way you might communicate with another person, you can tell the robot to come a little closer or to come over here to come pick something up. The relationship between people and robots is that we're companion species. We're on this planet together. We need each other. And you really can't help but project your emotion onto them. They feel like a puppy that's excited to see you, or they look like a tiger that's really intimidated and about to strike. They're big, strong, deadly machines that crush things. They reduce the need for human labor. That's what they're designed to do. Industrial robots are technologies that are half a century old. They're just impossible to use. They're just not user-friendly because they were never really intended to be. They're designed to execute a task that they're given. And if you give them the wrong task, they do the wrong thing. What we're showing here is that by tweaking the circumstances just ever so slightly, we can take this thing designed to replace humans and make them an extension of our own will and intentions. We can lower the barriers of entry for this incredible technology so low that someone who's never even seen this robot before can begin interacting with it and controlling it. When they're moving towards the robot and the robot is moving towards them, they're actually programming it with their own body movements. What we're doing with this robot is we're leaving it naked. It's just you and the robot in a shared space together. We send messages that are movement commands. Go to this position, with this orientation, at this speed, with this configuration. Or we can send trigger commands like, Oh, there's no people here. Go to sleep. Or, Ah, someone walked in. Wake back up and go greet them. All these sort of things are ways that we can build personality into this inanimate machine.